Here we are at the 24th Clinical Application of Age Management Medicine Conference in Orlando, Florida, and I'm so delighted to welcome you here, Dr. Maharaj, and I'm Dr. Florence Kamate, and we're going to be talking about the use of young, healthy plasma from young individuals and transferring that into older, frail, aging individuals. I'm quite fascinated by that process and how we keep the immune system optimal for life, for healthy longevity. And I'd love to hear more about it and share some of your work and research in that field. Well, thank you, Dr. Komite, and it's a pleasure to be here again. And um, I appreciate your hospitality and AMMG and having me here to talk about this area that I'm so passionate about. Um, so I, I think that the, what, we're, what everyone wants to achieve in our lives, everyone, patients, doctors, everyone, is healthy, a healthy lifespan. Uh, some people say, well, I'm, I, it doesn't matter to me how long I live because it's, it's important for me to be healthy. And I agree. The and quality of our life. the quality of life. The jeu de vie. I yes. want to live life to the fullest. Exactly. exactly. I agree. And uh, that's what we're all after. Yeah. We have a problem, though, in, because uh, in the current healthcare system, which exists he here in the United States and around the world, we anticipate by the year 2050 uh, there are going to be 2 billion people annually. And with the current health care system, which is not a health care system, it's a disease care system, there's a huge uh, societal impact and a huge economic burden. And so we have of got, aging. Of aging, the, associated aging. with aging. Uh, and so we've got, to, we've got to find solutions. So that's the area we're working in. So if we look at, uh, if we look at um, our immune system, and we look at the, what happens to our immune system as we, uh, with aging, what we find is that for the, there, there's, there are three groups of people we can classify in terms of the immune system. You have those individuals who can live to be 100 and healthy, and that's what we all want. Mm -hmm. so, and those individuals, if you look at their immune system, they're maintaining a normal homeostasis of their immune system so that they're maintaining its function right at the same function that they had when they were age 20, they're maintaining it right to the, to the, to the end of their life. So anything spans. that comes at them, they can handle because their yes. immune system is powerful yes. and they're able to battle any kind of internal or external stressor, infection, cancer, abnormalities in the way a 20, 25 year old could take care of it. Exactly, so they have what's called resilience. If you think of a 25 year old, they go out and they party, they enjoy life. They burn the candles. And they burn the ends. candle and right. they get up and they back up. It's the same thing. These, these healthy, these, um, these individuals who have a normal immune system right to the end of their lifespans, they can do that. They have resilience. The next group we talk about is what we as doctors regard as normal aging. And with normal aging, the immune system is already beginning to decline around age 40. But by age 65, the immune system has really declined, has declined to such a level as what we call a nosedive. And if you look at it from the perspective of diseases, if you look at, for example, cancer, the cancer surveillance data in the United States shows that uh, the incidence of cancer at the age of, in the age group 65 to 74 is 2,000 times greater than the incidence of cancer in a 20-year-old. Wow. And that is, we, we all know that cancer occurs when immune surveillance breaks down. So and abnormal cells are forming, but unlike a 20-year-old, a 65 to 74 year old who's aging, age appropriate, mm -hmm. that is they don't have a super high resilient immune system, cannot battle it, cannot clean up the system, and therefore these cancer cells are surviving. Correct. <laughs> right? Yes. And present. It's, yes, and it's uh, in that particular group, they're, um, <clears throat> they're, all, they're cancer cells, but they also have what's, what we call senescent cells. And these senescent cells are cells where, where they're the cells have been damaged, they have mutations in them. And so they undergo a process where they divide and then they stop dividing. But be, these senescent cells are really the bane of our lives because that's, those are the ones where they're not being removed by the immune system. So as they stay around, they're producing these pro-inflammatory cytokines which actually causes the diseases. Now it's a protection because if these senescent cells were to go on and have further mutations, then they can become cancerous. 
So senescence is, in essence, the precursor of cancer. And, and these senescent cells, are, those are the cells that have, that have fought disease in the past, and they've been damaged in some ways. Are those also memory cells? Well, it, Are there a different kind of class of cells yes. than memory cells? So in the immune system, you have these are cells. They are memory cells, which, as you say, they have fought disease before. They've got memory so that if, if, a, if a virus comes in, they will kill them. However, because the viruses, like the herpes group of viruses, can keep attacking these cells, mutations begin to occur, and then the cells become senescent. So they're not, no longer functioning to, uh, to do what they normally do. They just become like junk cells, which are producing these inflammatory cytokines. And that, we call that T-cell senescence. And T-cell senescence is associated with inflammation. And inflammation is associated with the diseases that we know, what we call chronic diseases. So that's essentially um, what happens in what we classify as the diseases associated with normal aging. There's a third. You mentioned these senescent cells themselves can be cancer causing, or they're not protective of battling cancer, or if, if they're abnormal cells, they can't clean them up. Well, there, there, there are two parts to it. The, the senescent cells can be cancer causing. And the other thing is that they're secreting these inflammatory proteins, which it. are suppressing mm -hmm. the other components of the immune system, which would normally remove them. Okay. So you yes. said they're hanging around doing damage in and of themselves yes. and producing pro-inflammatory markers. Exactly, okay. which can promote cancer. The third group of, is, is a group of people who are um, in their early, uh, they're, they're around 30, 40, this group, their immune system begins to decline rapidly. And we call that accelerated aging because they are now acquiring these chronic diseases we would normally see in an older age group. They're acquiring these chronic diseases. And we see many of them in our practices. We see people who think that they're doing well and then suddenly they come down with a cancer or they come down with another disease and they say, but I've been leading a normal lifespan and I've been doing, I've been do a healthy li lifespan and I've been doing everything. And this group, what's happening is their immune system has been damaged, or it's, it is being damaged by lifestyle, it's being damaged by the environmental um, factors that they're being exposed to, or they may have genetics which predisposes them to that. For example, you see some young people who are getting Parkinson's disease, and when you look at their family history, they have a history of genetic mutations which predisposes them to that. So tell me what you're doing with the research that you're now embarking upon. Is there some aspect of it that you can share? I know sometimes it's not possible to share it, yes, but um, we do have another couple of minutes and you might want to mention what you're hoping to um, engage in in the next year or so. Yes. So, the, so age cells have multiple ab abnormalities with, within them. Um, uh, and so the, what we call the reductionist approach says that we would use one, uh, one, one treatment. So some people are saying, well, we'll use supplements, or some people are saying we'll do NAD plus infusions or something like that, where it's a single thing. The way that we, a, a cell, when a cell, what we understand about stem cells is that when, and also cells with aging, is that when their function begins to decrease, it's still possible to salvage them if we come, can come at it as, from a whole point of view. So we do know that young people, they're producing all the cytokines, the, 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 the blood factors, the hormones, as well as the, what we call microvesicles, which are coming from their own stem cells, that have the factors that allow their cells to regenerate quickly. So we are saying, we are asking young people, as part of our protocol, to, to become donors, where we will stimulate their stem cells to uh, increase the numbers of stem cells that are circulating in their plasma, and that the stem cells then release all these different factors into the plasma. And so we're taking that plasma and we're separating it into aliquots and we're giving it back to individuals who qualify as having frailty. And we know that in, an individual who has frailty, if you measure their immune system, it's usually abnormal. So we're, take, we're saying that frail individuals would be the, the subjects of our study and the young blood plasma, which was given back over a period of a year, um, uh, at regular infusions over a year, these cells will be, it's almost like drip feeding. So the cells will, be, will be getting the factors which will allow them to improve. Um, and then what we're looking for is at the end of the first year, we'll be measuring uh, a number of parameters up to a hundred different markers of aging. 
and at the end of the second year, we will look to see after they've been off treatment for a year, what has happened to those different markers, including so the markers of frailty. So essentially, you're taking the whole system that comes out of a young person who can burn the candles at both ends, mm -hmm. has a very active and super resilient system, mm -hmm. and you're using their system to naturally prompt and generate, regenerate a, a, a normal or an optimal physiological system to recreate a younger system in the frail, elderly, declining immune system of aged individuals. Yes. And hoping that that will regenerate an immune system that's resilient again, once yes, again. Yes, correct. In effect, an anti-aging or a system that will resist disorders of aging and keep us living a healthy lifespan for the rest of our lives, whether yes, that's 100, right. 120, 150, mm -hmm. maybe forever. Yes. <laughs> but that would be outstanding. Yes, uh, yes. Well, we, we would look forward to learning lots more mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully welcome you back here once you begin to accumulate early stages of data. Mm -hmm. I know you're very well published in many aspects of your work in the past. And we'll look forward to um, both going on until at least 120 yes. and continuing to publish some yes. of this uh, data. Anything else you'd like to add? That well, I, I just want to add, yes, we both want to go on to be 120, but we want to make sure that we are healthy and we do all the things that we love to do. Absolutely. Like <laughs> teaching, lecturing, treating patients, making a difference every day in the lives of the people we, me we meet. So. Yes. I, again, thank you so much for, for being here. It's a pleasure to be here, and uh, I really, I've really enjoyed be, being here in the conference. So thank We're you. We're delighted you could join us. We learned so much, and uh, we welcome you, and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Yes, thank, thank you. you.